In this video, we will discuss duration and convexity using an example similar to a problem out of the excellent text, Hall Options, Futures, and Derivatives. If we exactly calculate the price of a bond using continuous compounding, this formula here would be the approach. The bond price B is going to equal a discounted sum of cash flows, where C sub I is a cash flow at time period I, Y sub I is the interest rate demanded in market, and T sub I is the time in which the cash flow takes place. The duration formula looks somewhat similar to this. The duration of a bond equals the summation of the time which cash flow takes place times the dollar amount of that cash flow. Find the present value of that dollar amount by taking it to the exponent of minus y, the interest rate demanded in the market, times the time t in which the cash flow takes place. Sum all of that up and divide by b, the price of the bond. Duration is generally measured in years and is a measurement of how long it takes you to get your money back if you invest in a bond. It can be used using this equation, which is a Taylor series analysis, to figure out the approximate change in a price of a bond. The change in the price of a bond is going to equal minus the bond's price times the duration, assuming continuous compounding, times the change in interest rate y plus one-half times the convexity times the change in interest rate y squared. And if we were doing the full Taylor series, then there would be a change in y cubed term, a change in y to the fourth term, etc. But generally, for finance purposes, you do not go out that far, sometimes for physics purposes. We could then say if interest rates change, the new price of the bond, B sub B, would be the initial price of the bond, B sub A, plus the change in bond's price, which is the approximation here. We will study this using, again, the problem out of the Hall text, which considers a portfolio A consisting of a one-year discount bond with a face value of 1,000 and a nine-year discount bond with a face value of 5,000. Also, a portfolio B, which consists of a 6.5 year discount bond with a face value of 5,700, and we're assuming the current yield on all bonds is 10%. So, first we want to calculate the initial price of each of these bonds, then the duration of each of these bonds, and the problem is designed so the durations will be the same, and then we will study how accurate the duration approximation is. So if we look at bond A, its initial price is going to be 1,000 times exponent minus 0.1, the interest rate, times one year, because that's when the payment of 1,000 takes place, plus 5,000 exponent of minus 0.1% times 9, because that's the year in which the second payment takes place, which gives us initial bond A's price of $2,937.69. To get the duration, again, we multiply by the time in which the first payment takes place, one year, times the dollar amount of that payment, 1,000, exponent of minus 0.1 times 1, plus 9, the time when the second payment takes place, times the value of the payment, 5,000, exponent of minus 0.1 times 9, and then we divide by the bond's price here. So showing our full calculation using Excel, 1 times 1,000 exponent of minus our initial interest rate, which is 0.1 times 1, plus 9 times 5,000 exponent of minus our initial interest rate, 0.1 times 9, divided by the initial price of the bond. And we get a duration for bond A of 6.5 years. Um, since the payments in bond A occur partially in year 1, and partially in year nine, we get our money back basically sometime on average between year one and year nine, and 6.5 years seems about right. For the second bond, it's a zero coupon bond. We get no coupons, but we get all of our money back, $5,700 in 6.5 years, 
So what's the initial price of that bond? 5,700 exponent of minus 0.1 times 6.5, which is calculated here, 5,700 exponent of minus 0.1 times 6.5 of $2,975.66. Calculating the duration of that will be 6.5 years times 5,700 exponent of minus 0.1 times 6.5 divided by the initial price of the bond, which gives us exactly 6.5 years, since that's when we get all the money back. And this problem is designed for simplicity so that both portfolio A and B have a very similar duration and a very similar price. Therefore, we can graph them easily on this nice graph here. We have change in interest rates on the bottom, change in price. Initially, we have interest rates of 10%, and both of our bond prices are initially around here of $1,000. Then we're going to ask, well, if interest rates go up or down, how do the bond prices change? So we can do that exactly over here. Well, here is the bond price calculation similar to what we did. And the only variable here is we have A28, the interest rate. And we can change that interest rate all the way down to zero, in which case neither of the cash flows are discounted. And the value of the bond is just going to be 5,000 plus 1,000 or 6,000, as shown up here on the blue line. And of course, if interest rates go down, bond prices go up. If interest rates go up, bond prices go down. Doing the same thing over here for bond B, we have our initial bond price, 5,700 discounted at exponent of minus 10% times 6.5 in the year in which the payment takes place. And once again, as interest rates go down, bond prices will go up. And it'll cap out here at $5,700, the value when there is no interest. And on the other side, of course, as interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And we get the curvature there. So these lines, the red line is the exact price change of bond B. The blue line is the exact price change of bond A. We also do these calculations using the duration approximation. So for the duration approximation, we're going to say the bond's final price, bond B, is going to be the bond's initial price, bond A, and then we'll just use this component right here for our duration. So the bond's initial price is B28. If we look right here, the bond's initial price is going to be B28. The 2,937.69, and that stays a constant. And here's our duration approximation term. The duration is 6.5 right there times the bond price right here, and then our change in interest rate term. So initially, these two are the same, zero. If we go up to, we'll say, 0.5 right here, well, we're going to have a approximation of our initial bond price, B28, plus 6.5 times B28, our initial bond price. And then the change in interest rates will be the difference between A28, which is 10%, minus A18, which is 5%, or 0 0.05. And therefore, our bond price will have increased from 2,937 to 3,896. Again, that's going to be the initial bonds price plus this term here. And we can do the same thing again for our bond B. This is the initial price. So if we look here at 5%, we're going to have the initial price D28 plus the duration term of 6.5 times the initial price of D28 and then the change in interest rate term, which is 10% minus 5%. So the bond in that example will increase from 2,975 to 3,942. So our duration approximation here is linear. In reality, the price of the bond is a curvature. For small changes in interest rates, the duration approximation will be very close to the bond price. 
but you can see you know, small changes in interest rates here. These two are pretty close. If we get way up here for pretty big changes in interest rates, then we can get gaps of quite a bit. And obviously you can see that on the graph. So the farther away we get from the initial interest rate, the less accurate the linear duration approximation is going to be. And of course, both of these bonds are designed to have the initial similar price and the initial duration. But as we get farther and farther away from the initial interest rate, we can see that they both have different convexities because they have different curvatures. The bond that curves up the most here is bond A, and you can see it curves up the most on both sides. Bond B curves up somewhat less. Therefore, bond A has a higher convexity than bond B. The convexity term is always positive, so the duration approximation on both sides of the initial interest rate will underestimate the price of the bond, and the bigger the convexity is, the more the duration approximation will underestimate the price of the bond. I thank you for watching this video.